shooting video on our smartphones is convenient. We can just open our camera app and hit record. But if we want it to be more professional looking, we have to work a little bit harder. Since digital cameras were invented, filmmakers have tried to make them shoot video that looks more like film. Film can have a more dreamy, more artistic look to it than digital video. To get digital video to look like film, there's a few little tips and tricks you need to know, and it can all be done using your smartphone. In this video, I'm going to show you how, using the free camera app Open Camera and free editing app VN or Vlog Now. So let's get started. <music> Once you have installed Open Camera, the first thing you need to do is switch on the Camera 2 API. Google introduced the so-called Camera 2 API to give camera app developers better access to more advanced controls of the camera, like manual exposure, ISO and shutter speed, focus, and so on. And when you first install Open Camera, Camera 2 API is disabled this means when you try to adjust shutter speed or focus manually, the option is not there. To switch Camera 2 API on, tap the cog icon and scroll down until you reach Camera 2 API. Tap it and select the bottom option. Now when you return to the main interface of the app, you're able to control exposure and focus manually. Film cameras used for shooting movies for many decades would normally shoot at 24 frames per second. This was partly down to the physical restrictions of shooting film. But it is what gives film the look it has. A look which digital filmmakers have been trying to mimic for the last few decades. So the next thing to do is to set open camera to shoot at 24 frames per second. So tap the cog icon, scroll down to video settings, open that and scroll down a list of settings until you get to video frame rate. Open this and select 24. You'll see that open camera tells you this frame rate is approximate and that the frame rate might not be achieved. One reason for the approximate frame rate is that all smartphones shoot what is known as variable frame rate, and this is a form of compression which enables high quality video files to take up less space. Now, do we need manual controls? In a camera built to shoot film, there is a mechanical shutter. This shutter is limited in how quickly it can open and close. Normally it would be set to 180 degrees, which would allow light to hit the film stock for half the time. For example, shooting at 24 frames per second, the shutter would be open for 1 48th of a second 24 times per second. And this setup came about due to the physical restrictions of cameras and film. Faster frame rates would produce smoother movement, but were hard to achieve and used up too much film. Slower frame rates produced motion that was a bit jerky, which is why old black and white films from the early days of cinema often had that look. The result is a look which has a certain amount of motion blur. This means any movement will blur slightly in each frame, and this blur makes the final film or video appear nice and smooth. Because digital cameras don't have this physical restriction, they can produce very high shutter speeds. Using open camera, my Samsung S9 can produce a shutter speed of up to 1 ten thousandth of a second, and this would be impossibly fast for a movie camera with a physical shutter. So if you leave your camera shooting in auto exposure mode, in bright conditions, the camera will set shutter speed very high. While this is great for controlling the exposure and means you can shoot in daylight with no problem, there's no motion blur and so the final video can look a bit harsh. To achieve a nice smooth look, a general rule is to keep the ISO low and the shutter speed slow. Tap the plus and minus exposure icon on the left. As open camera is still in auto mode, there's only one slider which can be used to adjust exposure, lighter or darker. So now tap the letter M, which stands for manual control. You will see two sliders one for ISO and one for shutter speed. And these are your key exposure settings when using manual control. 
general rule here is to try to keep ISO at the lowest possible level. In low light conditions, this can be a bit of a challenge. But when you move this slider too far, digital noise will begin to appear in your image. If possible, keep your ISO at the lowest setting. That said, with my S9, I usually find I can go up to about 100 to 200 ISO, as long as noise reduction is switched on. To achieve motion blur similar to that you get when shooting film at 24 frames per second and with a 180 degree shutter, set shutter speed to 1 48th of a second. This is not a fixed number that you must absolutely stick to, but a, a general guide. For example, in countries which have a 50 Hz electricity supply, a 1 50th shutter speed is needed. Otherwise, you can get a strobing effect in the video. But the difference between 1 48th and 1 50th is really tiny. In terms of motion blur created, you will really not notice the difference. Now, if you have your ISO at rock bottom and shutter speed around 1 48th, if you're shooting outside in daylight, your video is probably going to be overexposed. And pretty much the only way to get past this problem is to place an ND, neutral density, filter over your lens. This is a low cost, newer set of filters, which includes a variable ND filter. It only cost me about 25 pounds. And basically, this is like putting sunglasses over your lens. It stops down the light so you can lower your shutter speed. Uh, I've already made a video about how to use uh, the ND filter, so go check that out if you haven't already. Now, too much light is a problem, but not enough light is also a problem. And when there's not enough light, we have to push ISO up, and this creates digital noise in the image. While you can reduce or remove digital noise later, using software, there's a limit to what can be done. Too much processing can make your video look as if everything is made from plastic. You know those beauty mode functions some smartphone apps have, where your face is smoothed out and your wrinkles and blemishes are removed. That's the same process as noise reduction. The only other option in this situation is to add light to the scene you're shooting. To help reduce the digital noise created in low light situations, you can set your smartphone to apply noise reduction. Tap the cog to open settings. Scroll down and tap processing settings. Now tap noise reduction algorithm. And this might not be available depending on your device. But I usually set this to fast as this uses less processing power. You can set it to high quality if you want. Bear in mind that if you ask too much from your smartphone's processor, it can overheat and become unreliable. While we're here, we can set the sharpness. So now tap edge mode algorithm and choose off. This setting controls how much sharpness your smartphone adds to the image. Now you might think extra sharpness is a good thing. In fact, physical film tends to be rather soft. Therefore, one of the things which makes our videos look harsh and digital is this edge sharpening. Now, if you don't have this setting, don't worry, we can remove some of this sharpness later. So now open camera should be set up to shoot with a cinematic film look style. I just wanted to mention manual focus because it's often ignored. We tend to just set our focus and start recording, but using focus during a shot is something professional cinematographers do all the time. So this is how you can use open camera for manual focus. Tap the icon with the three dots on the left. Now tap the M icon in the row at the top. This switches focus to manual, so now focus is controlled using the slider at the bottom of the screen. A nice touch to add to your video is a focus pull. Set your frame so there's an object close in the foreground and set focus on this object. Hit record and now move the slider slowly until a more distant object is in focus. Moving the slider nice and slow and smoothly will give you a much more polished result. When shooting with digital, you can never have too much quality, as long as your storage and smartphone processor can handle it. 
Using Open Camera, you can set your resolution and bitrate as high as possible. Now tap the settings cog, then scroll down and tap Video Settings. Tap Video Resolution. On my Samsung S9, I can shoot up to 4K. So select your preferred resolution and tap away. Now scroll down further and tap video bitrate. You will see again that like frame rate, bitrate is variable. And again, variable bitrate is what smartphones use to keep file sizes lower. It's another form of compression. With my Samsung S9, I can select up to 200 megabits per second. And that is a pretty high bitrate and probably more than I need to shoot for nice looking video. Anything above 30 megabits per second is really, you know, a high quality video. So now you've shot your video using these settings and achieved the film look. With good lighting, framing and camera movement, that's enough to create some awesome cinematic footage. That said, there are some extra adjustments you can make in post-processing too. So I'm using this free editing app VN or Vlog Now for Android, which allows some basic image adjustments. It's actually a pretty cool little app with a lot of features included in the free version. One thing we have to bear in mind is that smartphones shoot using a format which is really a delivery format. In other words, it's very compressed. So if we try to do too much post-processing, the image loses a lot of quality, but we can still make some small adjustments to help create this nice soft film look. So open up the VN app and tap the plus sign and start a new project. Choose the clip or clips you shot using open camera and tap apply. Now tap the filter icon in the row of icons at the bottom. You can start with a preset or use custom. I'll choose custom this time and now tap adjust. This brings you a series of basic color and tone adjustments. First, we can reduce some of that digital sharpness. So if you set your sharpness at a minus figure, the image will be softened to look more like film. And somewhere around minus 20 should be about enough. Another thing we can do is to reduce contrast a little bit. This will bring a few extra details out of the shadows. And again, it softens the look just a little bit. We can also tweak the color slightly to reduce the red and create a bluer look. And this app even has a bunch of presets here you can try out. So you can select one of those and then adjust that as well if you want to try some of these different looks. And right at the end, there are some presets which are specifically for the film look. Uh, so that's pretty useful. Of course, there is not one look for film. Each film stock has a different look and can be treated differently to change the look as well, like we do with digital video. So really, how you color the video is up to you and is down to your vision. What mood are you trying to create? Now, if you want that cinematic widescreen look, you can change the aspect ratio at the top Choose the 21 by 9 to crop your video with a widescreen aspect ratio. So that's it for this video. And if you find it useful, please like and subscribe to our channel for further videos. And I'll see you in the next video.